Hi, and thanks to both of you for listening to this YouTube video. I am honored that you're even listening and hopefully prayerfully going to give me a chance at this. Listen, my strengths to the body of Christ is not so much original thinking, but original communication. So I hope and pray that you see through this short synopsis some of that original communication that comes out that will be given to the people at your church. I want to go over the messages that I would be giving from a Sunday through a Wednesday. On Sunday morning, my goal is to get them to see that everything revolves around the glory of God. We do that by starting off with Colossians chapter 1, verses 19 and 20, showing that Christ died for all things on earth and in heaven. And I ask my audiences, what are all things on earth? And they, they look quizzically and say, what do you mean? I said, what are all things? I don't know, plants, uh, animals, rocks, uh, water, mountains, fish. Yeah, 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 yeah. A and what are things in heaven? Are they got planets, asteroids, moons, stars. And I say, Christ died for those? Christ died for the stars? He died for the plants? He died for the animals? And they sit there saying, well, well I don't know, but that's what the text says. Why would he do that? Then we go to Genesis chapter 3, verse 17, which says there were four curses. And the fourth curse is cursed is the ground. Cursed is the ground. And so all of a sudden they realize, oh, everything out there that we see is not the way it was originally designed to be, the way God created it at the Garden of Eden. It has been cursed. It has been damaged in some way, shape, or form by our sin. And so all of a sudden we have three, ra three reasons why Christ died. He died for us. We all know that. We hear it all the time. He died for all things on earth, and he died for all things in heaven. Wow, that's three reasons why Christ died. So we ask two simple questions. Are there any other reasons? And if there are, which one is primary? So we go to Romans 15, 8 and 9, where Christ came so that the Gentiles may glorify God for his mercy. <gasps> wow, he died so that we can bring him glory. Oh, so he died for four things. Number one, he died for us. Number two, for all things on earth. Number three, for all things in heaven. Number four, for the glory of God. So we ask the same question. Which one is primary? Where do we find our answer? Oh, probably Jesus. He'd be the one to give us the answer. And so we go to John 12, 27 and 28. Christ is one day away from the cross. As he's one day away from the cross, he's going to his heavenly Father, and what he does not say speaks volumes. He does not say, Father, save these kind, wonderful, worthy people from hell. They don't deserve it. In fact, he didn't even mention us. What does he say? Father, glorify thy name. Oh, Jesus died primarily for the glory of of his father. And that helps him to see, oh, it's not primarily about us. This is about what God gets to do, not about what we get. And I demonstrate that by saying in every page of your Bible, there's a theme of the glory of God. There's a thread, whether it's Genesis, where he began and begats, whether it's Joseph, the story of Joseph, whether it's the judges, whether it's King David or Saul or Solomon or the major prophets or the minor prophets, there is a thread of the glory of God in every page of our Bible. That would be Sunday morning. Sunday evening, I continue on with this theme of the glory of God by using cat and dog theology. In cat and dog theology, it's a very simple joke. A dog says, you pet me, you feed me, you shelter me, you love me, you must be God. And a cat says, you pet me, you feed me, you shelter me, you love me, I must be God. Most Christians, without realizing it, think that God lives for them. God did everything for them. As a result, God is like uh, UPS. What can God do for me? And so they're praying, dear Lord, I want this and this and this and this. In the name of Jesus, I claim it. Amen. And their Christianity, without realizing it, becomes selfish and self-centered. So we begin to stretch cat and dog theology, seeing that it's about the glory of God. And we start to get them to say, I break them down into small groups. Hey, what do you think a cat marriage is like? What's a dog marriage like? And so they go in their small groups and begin to discuss it. And then we get some feedback. And then we say, what do you think a cat parenting looks like? What does dog parenting looks like? And they go into small groups, discuss it, and then we review that. And then what does cat worship look like? What does dog worship look like? And they break down into the small groups, getting them to realize the glory of God affects every area of their lives. That's Sunday night. On Monday night, we begin to ask the question, how much glory do we want to bring to God? Do we want to bring God some glory, a lot of glory, or maximum glory? And I challenge them because they're there on a Monday night. They want to bring God maximum glory. Well, how do we do that? Well, I challenge them that we will bring God the greatest glory when we redeem people from every tongue, every tribe, 
and every nation. And that God, in the very beginning of the Bible, wanted to create diversity so he could bring them back together in harmony to reveal his greatest glory. So we go over the Abrahamic covenant, Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. Two parts. Number one, the top line, God wants to bless us. And the bottom line, he wants us to be a blessing to all the nations on the face of the earth. And then we trace that top line, bottom line, all through the Old Testament and into the New Testament. And then bringing to a conclusion in Revelations 5, 9, that there are people from every tongue, every tribe, and every nation. So I help them to see here in Genesis chapter 12, God makes a promise. To Abraham, I'm going to bless you to be a blessing to all the peoples on the face of the earth. Here in Revelation 5, he fulfills it. There are people from every tongue, every tribe, and every nation. Here is the promise. Here is the fulfillment. Promise, fulfillment, promise, fulfillment. Everything between Genesis chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, and Revelation chapter 5 is one story. A story with a God with an unending desire to bless you and me that we might be a blessing to the nations. And then I encourage them, if you're kind of against missions, you're really not that excited about it, do me a favor, put your thumb firmly on Genesis 12, your four fingers in Revelation chapter 5, verse 9, and take missions out of the Bible. Take missions out of the Bible. All of a sudden, Bible study just got a whole lot easier. Why? It's just 11 chapters. You can now read through the Bible in a year. <laughs> Why? Because everything else is missions. Everything else is missions. Missions, and I say to them, you cannot take missions out of the Bible. It is the Bible. It is the heart of God. On Tuesday night's message, I'll help them to see it's a lot easier to focus in on one part of the covenant over the other. Obviously, it's a lot easier to focus on the top line of the covenant, the fact that God wants to bless us, rather than the bottom line of the covenant, that we're to be a blessing to our neighbors and to the nations. And I do that by having them quote Psalm 46, verse 10. I say, be still and, and they all say, know that I am God, but they stop there. And I help them to see, what you just said is not incorrect, but it's incomplete. Be still and know that I am God. I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. And so I tell them about my Bible that I got when I was a freshman at Penn State University. And I tell them how I forgot to differentiate between my Bible and my yearbook. What do you do when you get your yearbook in high school? Well, you begin to look for your own picture. That's what I did when I got my Bible. I began to say, where am I in this? What's God got in this for me? How can God bless me? And as a result, I challenge the men and women, most of us are only reading half of our Bibles. We're only reading half. We're focused on the top line of the covenant and we're forgetting and missing the bottom line, God's desire for us to be a blessing to the nations. So we begin to look through major Bible stories, David and Goliath, Daniel and the lion's den. Here's the top line lesson. Here's the bottom line lesson that most of us have forgotten. Top line, bottom line, top line, bottom line. We begin to go through, look at the Old Testament, some of the New Testament, and see how the top line and the bottom line are both consistent and how most of us are missing half of our Bibles. Tuesday night. Wednesday night, I'm going to show them Matthew 24, 14. Christ is not going to come back until all nations are reached and show them the priority We've got a job to do. My brother, when he was an elder at a large Presbyterian church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, basically thought, yeah, we're to be Christians. We're supposed to be nice, be nice to people around us and love them. But basically, we're twiddling our thumbs, waiting for Jesus to come back. He had no idea that we, the church, have a job to do. That's the emphasis on Wednesday night. We, the church, we have a job to do. What is that job? We're to reach the nations. So I'm going to be going over basic statistics of how much of the world is reached, how much of the world is unreached, what defines an unreached people group, what defines an unengaged people group, and to help them to see the need, the priority of the major groups of people that we still have yet to reach. We'll be going over Thumb, T-H-U-M-B, Tribal, Hindu, Unreligious, Muslims, and Buddhists, the five major blocks of mankind we still have yet to reach. We'll also be emphasizing internationals that are right here in our backyard, the need to reach them. That's it. That's what I would propose. I ask you to prayerfully consider having me as a missions conference speaker for the World Missions Conference, either 2023 or 2024. May God give you wisdom. Thanks.